Welcome to The Astrology Show with your host, Kelly Fox. Each week, Kelly will give you access to the current transits that are a valuable tool which provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has through our sun sign. Understanding the current planetary influences each week can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. Sometimes events in your life may seem completely random, but there is a pattern to the order of these events. One set in motion in part by you and in part by the planets and stars in the sky and their influence on your life here on Earth. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, if you're going to get that promotion, move to a new city, or fall in love, tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance. It can help you anticipate problems before they occur, give you tools to cope with changes, and help you look forward to the wonderful days ahead. Kelly Fox is a professional astrologer and internet pioneer who launched Astrology.com, one of the first and most successful astrology websites. Today, her passion lies with her new site, TheAstrologer.com, where she brings a modern-day approach to an ancient wisdom. Please join Kelly each week to learn more about how the planets can align for you. Hi there, and welcome to The Astrology Show. I'm your host and astrologer, Kelly Fox, talking about the planets this week. And the headline of the week is Leo, Leo, and Leo. If you're a Leo the lion or you have, I was going to say, fortunate enough to have a lion in your life, then this show is dedicated to you. Uh, we have Mars and the Sun moving into Leo this week. So on Saturday, the sun moves into Leo, and that's the astro headline of the week. And I will be talking all about Leo during the show. And on Thursday, we have warrior planet Mars moving into Leo. And then next week, and I will save this for next week's show, but next week, the sun and Mars form a conjunction in Leo. So we're leaving the season of Cancer, Cancer the Crab, and we're moving into Leo the Lion. Those two energies are completely different. Cancer is all about uh, internalizing. Leo is all about the external. Uh, so we're switching gears, so to speak, uh, when we move from Cancer to Leo, and that happens on Saturday. And so with Leo, uh, it's all about recognition. It's all about having the spotlight shining. And of course, this influence uh, will be dependent on where Leo is in your birth chart. And if you haven't had your birth chart, you can get a free birth chart. You can see where the house of Leo is in your horoscope. Um, or your chart wheel, just go to theastrologer.com slash chart wheel for your free chart wheel. And it will list all the planets in all the signs at the time you were born. And it's, it's, it is extremely insightful. Now, if you're a Leo, be sure to check your daily horoscope, your weekly horoscope, and your monthly horoscope on the On Times website. And I don't just mean if you're a Leo. If you're any sign, which is all of you, uh, be sure to check your daily, weekly, and monthly horoscope on the On Times uh, website. And uh, those horoscopes are brought to you by yours truly. Uh, now, Leo is the ruler of the heart. And so this means that this is a season for love and romance and uh, showy displays of affection. Now, some of you out there might be cringing at that thought, uh, PDA, public displays of affection. And for those of you that have some type of Leo energy in your chart, uh, you will be delighted with this information. So this is all about uh, surprising your sweetie with flowers or chocolates uh, because we've got uh, the sun and Mars moving into Leo this week. So it's all about showing uh, showing 
your loved one, um, that they're the king or queen of your life uh, and giving not only yourself the royal treatment but those that you care about the most. So, as I promised, this show is for you, Leo. Um, so, Leo is symbolised by the lion. And as I said, it's all about leadership when the sun is in Leo, which will be this Saturday the 22nd, through August 22nd when the sun will move into Virgo. And then that energy is very different as well. Uh, so Leo is all, all about leadership and pride and warmth and courage and strength. And as I said, uh, Leo is the symbol of the lion and the lion is the king or queen of the jungle. Uh, also with Leo, there's always a little bit of, uh, let's just say, a touch of drama thrown in. Uh, Leos have been known to make wonderful actors and actresses. Uh, and Leo has a real taste for the exciting and the dramatic. Uh, so if you're not a Leo but you do have a Leo in your life, uh, there will never be a dull moment when there is a Leo around. Now, Leo is a fixed fire sign uh, that is ruled by the sun. So Leo loves to be the center of attention. Uh, and if Leo is not the center of attention, uh, then like any good drama queen, can get very stubborn uh, when they don't get their own way. Uh, so Leo, because it's a fixed sign, uh, fixed signs are quite stubborn. The other fixed di signs are Taurus, as I said, Leo, Scorpio and Aquarius. So these four signs uh, will dig their heels in if they don't get their own way. Uh, and of course, you know, some of you out there might be saying, oh no, I'm a fixed sign and I'm pretty easy going. Well, of course, in astrology, there's no hard and fast rule because we are a combination of all the planets in all the signs. And so you might be a Leo, for example, but you might have other planets in mutable signs. And mutable signs are very much easygoing, go with the flow, flexible types of uh, energy. And um, the mutable signs are Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius and Pisces. So you, even though you might be a Leo or a fixed sign, uh, you might be more easygoing than how um, astrologers might portray you. And that's because uh, we are a combination of uh, various energies, different types of energies. So back to Leo. Uh, so let me think here. So Leos, as I said, make great actors. Uh, and that's because their bigger than life personalities are made for the stage. Um, Leo's a drama queen, uh, and not in a bad way, just uh, everything can be very dramatic. Um, and, you know, Leo's have a healthy sense of their own ego, and ego is not a dirty word. Ego just means we, we know who we are, we know what we're about. And as I said, Leo's adore being in the spotlight, and why shouldn't they be in the spotlight? Uh, and so despite what may seem like egotism, um, Leos are very, very loyal. They make devoted friends. Loyalty is one of their strongest points. Uh, and so if they, as long as they feel like they're getting the proper attention and respect from their loved ones, they'll return the favour with grand gestures of devotion. Because, as I just said, Leos are extremely loyal and devoted. Uh, once, once you have them as a friend, a lot of times they will be a lifelong friend, unless, of course, you don't give them the respect that they deserve, and then it might be all over. So it's very much about give and take. Uh, and sometimes, you know, Leo might need a little bit of extra attention, but they're totally worth it. Just think to the Leos you have in your life and how worth it they really are. And, you know, when they don't get their way or when they're not getting the, the proper credit, um, they might pout and sulk, but so what? They really make good friends. Uh, and as I said, this is very, it's a romantic time, the sun and Mars in Leo. 
so Leo is a very romantic sign and will go to sort of dramatic lengths to woo the object of its desires. Uh, so Leo, just think about it like this. Leo won't just stop at a dozen roses. Um, it will spoil its lover with a room full of fragrant blooms. A dozen roses is just not enough when it comes to Leo, when Leo has his or her sights set on you. Oh, and dinner and a movie. Oh, how amateurish. Probably most Leos are thinking. You know, Leo loves luxury and finery and will treat a date to the finest five-star restaurant. Um, how about this? Or better yet, a private rooftop feast catered by the best chef in the city. Oh, what's a little pouting? Who cares about pouting and sulking when you're going to be treated like that by the king or queen of the jungle? So, of course, Leos make great movie stars, theatre directors and managers of all types. Um, as I said, Leo is ruled by the sun and this is all about leadership. And so uh, the next, over the course of the next month, when the sun and Mars are both in Leo, this is all about um, leadership and management. So more about Leo, um, and of course, as I always have to emphasize in all the shows, it depends on how uh, this influence shines on the other planets in your birth chart. So everybody's different. So on that note, we're going to take a short break. After the break, I will continue with my dedication to Leo, so stay tuned. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Home Times. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit humanityhealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Aloha. My name is Jennifer O'Neill, and I'd like to invite you to come join me every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time for my show, Spirit Chat. Spirit Chat focuses on simplifying the process of using the spiritual tools and gifts you were born with in a way that fits into your everyday life. I also teach different techniques that will help you learn how to navigate the spirit realm and empower you on your own spiritual journey. So join me this Wednesday as I guide you through the spirit world. Hi, this is John Andrasik of Five for Fighting, here for RAD, the entertainment industry's voice for road safety. You know, style is a personal thing, and your lifestyle is your business. But if you take it on the road, it becomes everybody's business. So please, plan ahead, designate before you celebrate. Friends, don't let friends drive drunk. A public service announcement brought to you by RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. Hi there, and welcome back to The Astrology Show. I'm your host and astrologer, Kelly Fox, talking all about Leo. This show is dedicated to all you lions out there. Sun moves into Leo on Saturday, where it will be until August 22nd. Uh, Mars uh, will also be moving into Leo on Thursday, where it will be until September 5th. So everything Leo. So what can we expect when we have not just the sun, but the sun and Mars in Leo? Well, uh, many of us might find ourselves longing for recognition or credit or kudos uh, for the work that we've done or for who we are or what we're about. Uh, during the next few weeks, many of us will want to stand out and be seen and appreciated 
just for being who we are. Now, this is going to be emphasized uh, more so, not just because the Sun and Mars are in Leo, but on August 7th, we have a lunar eclipse. Now, this lunar eclipse is in uh, Aquarius, but uh, with a lunar eclipse, which is basically a supercharged, super intense full moon, uh, we've got the sun in Leo and the moon will be in Aquarius. So there is definitely uh, Leo influences there with the lunar eclipse. And then more so on the 21st, uh, the last full day of Leo, uh, we have a solar eclipse at nearly the last degree of Leo. And it's a special uh, solar eclipse because it's a total solar eclipse and it's running through the USA. So many of us are going to be affected by this uh, supercharged total solar eclipse in Leo. So everything I say in tonight's show will be doubly charged, quadruply emphasized uh, not only because the Sun and Mars will be in Leo, but we've got these eclipses coming up in August and it's going to be all things Leo for better or worse. Uh, let me think what else is in Leo, what else is it affecting? I will get to that actually. Um, so back to Leo and what, what that's going to mean for most of us. Um, so we want to be seen and appreciated. Uh, for not just for anything, but just for ourselves, who we are, what we're about. We want to be appreciated for what makes us special. So that's our talents, our personality, our past experiences. We want other people to notice us uh, under this all things Leo energy. Uh, and as I said, Leo is the ruler of the heart and is a romantic sign. And so big grand gestures of romance, uh, will be the flavor across the next month. Uh, and as I said, it's not just about uh, flowers and chocolates or a dozen red roses. It's, it's above and beyond anything you could probably imagine if you're not a Leo. Uh, Leo is also the sign of creativity. So uh, creative energy is really strong uh, or will be at this time. Uh, so this is a really great time over the course of the next month uh, or so to devote ourselves to our artistic passions and to stoke our creative fires. Uh, and of course, as I keep saying, drama is Leo's specialty. Uh, and so many of us will be uh, seeking the need for self-expression. Uh, and when that isn't honoured, uh, look out, melodrama will result. And as I said, pouting and sulking is just all part of that. Uh, and so Leo is also connected to the fifth house, and the fifth house is about children. So it's like if we don't have children in our lives, it's the time for our inner child coming out and calling for attention. It's really a time to take notice of our inner child and honour our childhood and our training from childhood. Um, also with the fifth house, it's about taking risks and chances, of course, always calculated. Uh, never just spur of the moment, even though Leo is a fire sign and the fire sign, that's Aries, Leo and Sag, uh, tend to jump into things without a second thought. Um, but Leo being a fixed sign uh, moves a little bit slower, so uh, calculated risk uh, is the way to go at this time. Um, also, with all this uh, fiery, uh, childlike energy, uh, with all this Leo energy, um, it's about having fun and doing something frivolous even, you know, because life can be really serious a lot of the time. Uh, so doing something fun and frivolous uh, will help us recharge our batteries uh, with all this Leo energy. Now, as I said, the sun is the ruler of Leo. Now, the sun is the center of our universe. It's the center of our solar system. It's the center of our Milky Way galaxy. So uh, it's only appropriate that the sun is the ruler of Leo. So if you have a Leo in your life, and sometimes they can be a little tiny, tinsy, tinsy, tiny bit of self-absorbed, but that's because they can't help it. Leos just can't help it. You know, and there's so many other positive attributes around this sign that, 
Yeah, we can we can sort of look the other way when when we're feeling that a Leo in our life might be a little bit um, oh yeah self absorbed. I guess is the right word for this. So and that's because they they just can't help it because their ruler is the sun. Now the sun is the center of the galaxy or our our galaxy. I mean not the whole galaxy, just our Milky Way galaxy. So you know just. Just as the sun is the center of the orbit of all our planets in our solar system, it's the center. It's the center of any good Leo in our lives, and where, how it relates back to all of us, not just Leos, is uh, you know everybody knows their sun sign, and so it's always a great place to start for any sort of budding astrologist. Uh, but you know, so the sun is our inner fire. It's our vital energy. Um, that will run through our whole life. Um, you know, the sun, our sun sign, no matter what sign you are, it represents our basic core personality. Uh, and, you know, separate from all the other influences that might drive or motivate us. So the sun tells us a lot about who we are, um, not just our personality, but our strengths and our challenges. And when you think of the sun as the ruler of Leo, um, Leo's got it pretty pretty down when it comes to the ego and okay yes as I said ego ego has negative connotations uh, but that's really not the true intention of the word it's just being self-aware um, okay and sometimes not all lions are self-aware um, you know we're growing and evolving uh, so uh, you know there's there's other positive attributes there with this sign um, and so anyway, so Leo uh, is ruled by the sun, if that explains anything about this sign. So also with Leo, I said that Leo is a fire sign. So the fire signs are Aries, Leo and Sagittarius. And so think about that element. So think about a fire. So fires burn bright. Um, they crackle with heat and energy, and they're essential to life. Um, and yes, they can be destructive. Uh, so when you think of any uh, Aries, Leo, or Sagittarians you might have in your life, you know we can attribute um, that fiery energy to uh, these these three signs. Uh, they're always on the go. They move quickly. Um, and each of these the fire signs uh, gains a vitality from their element of fire that might outshine uh, some of the other signs sometimes. Um, so for the fire signs, everything is immediate and intense. So these signs want to act fast on their impulses. And of course, Aries, Leo and Sagittarius, um, they feed off the excitement and adventure of life. Um, and they tend to lead pretty interesting lives. If you are fortunate to, enough to have an Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius in your life, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. And it's pretty rare to find a fire sign that doesn't live on the edge, at least some of the time. Think about uh, backpacking through the mountains or go-kart racing or salsa dancing, uh, anything that's fast-paced, fun, and adventurous. A fire sign, Leo Inc. Absolutely love it. Um, and so they are very hot blooded, um, but the trouble with fire signs is that they can burn bright but burn out just as fast. So when it comes to romance, because you know, Leo is a very romantic sign, and so for the next few weeks, uh, many of us can expect some passion. Uh, so if if a fire sign uh, has their sights set on someone, um, it's, sometimes it's more about the chase than the catch. So just be aware of that. And fire signs need someone who will keep them on their toes uh, and not stick to a dull routine. Although Leo, because it's a fixed sign, um, might be the exception to this fire sign rule. Um, but really, the fire signs gravitate toward fast-paced, high-energy, uh, leadership-oriented professions. And, you know, with Leo being a fixed sign, uh, the other fixed signs are Taurus, Scorpio, and Aquarius. Um, 
they don't really like change. So they sometimes tend to resist change unless it might be for a very, 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 very good reason. So if you are fortunate enough to have a Leo in your life, you might be laughing as I say this. Because uh, once this sign digs their heels in, there might be no turning back or changing their mind. Uh, and as I just said, unless it's for a really, really, really good reason. But, you know, on, on the other side, uh, this sign is not wishy-washy. Um, they're usually true to their words. They're very dedicated and loyal friends. Um, you know, so a little bit of stubbornness or even being conservative. Um, might not be so bad sometimes. Um, so the fixed signs generally um, are naturally dedicated and disciplined and will see something through to the end. Uh, of course, Leo is no exception um, being a fixed sign. Uh, you know, and the fixed signs, they don't like to deviate from the plan or the path, uh, which of course, you know, everything has uh, a positive and a not so positive. Um, but, you know, sometimes the fixed signs, Leo included, uh, might inhibit spontaneity, maybe, um, you know, instead of like wanting to just go off on a whim, they really want this, they want something planned out. Uh, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, but they, you know, the fixed signs, they underscore the importance of commitment, perseverance, stability. Uh, so, you know, it, it's really a mix. And that's what astrology is really great for is to, um, you know, so we can see things um, from all sides, you know, like it's not, it's not good or bad. Over the years I've had people ask if something's bad. Nothing's bad, it's, it just is. Anyway, we're going to take a short break. After the break, I am going to talk all about Leo compatibility, so stay tuned. Real Conscious Connection, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Join Vibe Nation Radio host, international psychic medium, Carrie Turcotte, as she guides her listeners to rediscover themselves by accessing the keys of knowledge that already exist within. Each week's show is divinely orchestrated to intertwine with the universal energies, allowing the listeners to go deeper within. At the end of each show, Carrie will tap into the energies of the listeners and give a message from spirit about the upcoming week. If you really want to get to know who you truly are, join Carrie each Monday at 3 p.m. on Vibe Nation Radio. This is a test to find out if you know it all when it comes to children. Name one of the leading killers of U.S. children age 1 to 13. What's the best way to protect children in a car crash? At what age and size should a child start using a booster seat? Don't assume you know it all when it comes to car seats for your child. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat and know for sure. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Hi there and welcome back to the Astrology Show. I'm your host and astrologer Kelly Fox talking about all things Leo. The sun moves into Leo on Saturday where it will be through August 22nd. On Thursday, warrior planet Mars, action planet Mars, moves into Leo where it will be until September 5th. And on top of that, throughout August uh, is eclipse month. Uh, and Leo is involved in the two eclipses. The first one is August 7th. There's a lunar eclipse in Aquarius, uh, which means the moon is in Aquarius and the sun is in Leo. And then the big news is on the 21st, there's a solar eclipse, a total solar eclipse in Leo, and it's running through the US of A. So uh, it's going to be very interesting at that time, late August, uh, to, to uh, see what happens in the headlines, in the news 
uh, when there's a total solar eclipse running through the USA in Leo. And it's, uh, it's let's just say it's at the last degree of Leo, which means Leo is all about leadership and uh, the spotlight. And so the last degree of Leo means there's some heavy karma around uh, people being in the spotlight or in leadership positions uh, and the last degree means endings or something comes to an end uh, and a total eclipse uh, through the USA. Now, we haven't had a total eclipse in the USA, running through the USA since I think it's like 1970 or the, the early 1970s. You have to tune in to future shows because I definitely will be talking about uh, the solar eclipse uh, as we get closer to it. But very, very interesting. Anyway, back to Leo compatibility. Uh, and this is probably one of my favorite things to do as an astrologer. I love it when I do uh, compatibility readings. Compatibility is also known as synastry in, astrolo in astrology. And um, I really love doing compatibility readings. There was a time when I was working for um, a matchmaker behind the scenes. And this matchmaker would give me... Um, say person A, person B, person C, and are they matched better with, um, you know, the other person over here? So say if you had one one bachelor and then you had three three single ladies and uh, which, which one is he better matched with? So that was uh, something I did for a little while and I absolutely love doing compatibility. It's so insightful. And no, there is no such thing as a perfect couple or a perfect match. Uh, everybody brings different things to the table. And uh, please don't, uh, I have many people say, oh, I'm a, I'm a Capricorn and I only date Pisces men. But please don't ever do that. You can't do compatibility based off of just a sun sign. It is a wonderful place to start, and that's what I'm going to do tonight uh, with the Leo compatibility. But there is so much more to compatibility than just some signs. Uh, it's an excellent place to start because, as I said before, uh, the sun is the core of who we are, uh, but there is so much more to it. So, Leo compatibility. Uh, Leo and Aries compatibility. Well, this one where there's heat, there's fire, and you two are burning up. So you might have found that your attraction was instant and hot, 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 but don't ignore your problem areas, or potential problem areas, I should say, and that would be a struggle over who's the boss. So Aries has a me first attitude, uh, but as I've been saying throughout this show, uh, Leo has an ego and it needs to be stroked once in a while. And Aries, because you're always in such a big rush to do everything, uh, you might forget to do that at times. So it's really important that you remember to stroke your Leo's ego once in a while. Now, Leo likes to rule the roost. Uh, and can be very sensitive when feeling ignored or underappreciated. Leo and Taurus compatibility. Well, you have plenty of common ground uh, because you're both fixed signs, which means you can both be incredibly stubborn, but uh, your differences will create friction. Um, family is important to each of you, uh, and which can be a strong foundation for a relationship, of course. Um, but you might find that you clash too much uh, because of this whole fixed nature uh, that you both have. Um, but you're both sensual, sometimes even dramatic. Um, so it's good It's good if you've got long-term goals together. It, it can definitely work out. Or, of course, other planetary placements. Uh, Leo and Gemini compatibility. Uh, you two make a really good match. Uh, Leo, a fire sign. Gemini, an air sign. So fire and air always go well together. Uh, and so, Leo, you are one of the few signs that will tolerate Gemini's maverick nature, let's just say. 
Uh, and maybe, in fact, you are attracted to those qualities. Uh, they might even turn you on and fire you up. Uh, and, Leo, you can have a wonderfully grounding influence on Gemini who can be very changeable. Uh, and Gemini will provide you the thrills that you sometimes crave because your sign loves some drama. Uh, and so you two, Gemini and Leo, uh, impress each other with your wit and energy. Um, although Leo might be more interested in a long-term commitment than Gemini. Leo and Cancer compatibility. So at first glance, you two might not seem like such a great combination. Um, the crab is the water sign, which can dampen fiery Leo's spirit. And Leo's energy might make the crab draw back into its shell. But when you look a little bit beyond the surface, um, you two actually have quite a few values in common uh, that could make this connection work. Um, you're both highly romantic, sentimental and family oriented, um, which is, of course, a wonderful foundation for a relationship. Not to mention your ruling planet. Uh, Cancer is ruled by the moon and Leo is ruled by the sun. Uh, we would be uh, not existing if we didn't have the sun and moon. Leo and Leo compatibility, well, without a doubt, you two will fight for who's in charge. This is definitely a battle of egos. Um, you just both have to have such a need to be in the spotlight, um, surrounded by your adoring fans. So in order to work this relationship out, you'll either have to take turns or agree to rule separate domains um, because, as we all know, there can't be two leaders of the pack, or can there? Uh, but uh, expect plenty of drama together uh, and but plenty of the good things in life as well because you both have um, quite snazzy tastes uh, and you both love socialising and want to live the high life. And, of course, family is a high priority. Leo and Virgo compatibility. Uh, at first, you two don't seem like the best match. Uh, but Leo, you'd love to be in the spotlight. And Virgo, you're most comfortable in a supporting role. So this might work out well if you can settle your differences. Um, in fact, you know, together, you make a good system of checks and balances. So Leo t leans towards extravagance and Virgo, uh, you make a great accountant and can help temper Leo's splashiest urges. So once you've established your role, uh, it should work out quite well. Leo and Libra, your compatibility, you have a great connection and as I said before, fire and air go really well together. Uh, and so your connection um, is enhanced by lots of social activity and only the finest things in life. Libra, you love Leo's big spending ways, you adore romance, and Leo really makes you feel like royalty. Uh, just make sure you return the favour if you want to keep your lion feeling loved. Uh, Leo can be a little bit brash at times, and that's uh, only for Libra's refined tastes. Uh, but the lion's pride will be dented if this fact is mentioned. So it's a good thing Libra is so tactful. Leo and Scorpio compatibility. Hmm, two fixed signs. Uh, there could be a lot of potential for friction here. Um, but what you do have in common is your stubbornness and your twin desires for control. Uh, and, but unless there are other planetary influences at work in your chart, uh, casual connection may work better than anything long term. Uh, as problems could begin when your possessive, willful natures come to the fore, and that's both of you. Um, and Leo, I really hate to tell you this, but Scorpio will always have the last word. And there you have it with those two. 
and Leo and Sagittarius compatibility. Well, two fire signs. So you make a great team. So you're both optimistic and impulsive and will egg each other on to new heights. Together you're always on the go, always on to the next big adventure. Uh, you're both curious, especially you, Sag. Uh, Leo, you can expect to learn a thing or two from Sag. Um, problems could arise from your twin fiery temperaments. Sag loves to tell the truth which sometimes prideful Leo doesn't want to hear. But really, overall, you're a great match. And that's the thing with uh, compatibility is looking at the elements and how do the elements connect. Next up, we have Leo and Capricorn compatibility. Uh, you two share a karmic tie and you'll feel it in a way you're deeply drawn to one another. It's like there's some sort of familiar connection or they, you seem familiar to each other. Um, you don't always have a whole lot in common, though you do share some similarities. Um, you're both very ambitious uh, and will discuss your dreams and goals early on in the relationship. And of course, you both love living in the lap of luxury and make good leaders. Um, but on an intimate level, mm, I don't know, not so sure. Unless there's other um, planetary connections involved, it might be a little bit tricky. Next up, we have Leo and Aquarius. Now, this is really interesting because these are opposite signs. And in op with opposite signs in astrology, when it's good, it's great. When it's bad, it's not so great. And the other thing is, if you are part of a Leo and Aquarius uh, relationship, oh, saved by the break. <laughs> We're going to take a short break. After the break, I will continue and let you in on a little secret about Leo and Aquarius. So stay tuned. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Tune in to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World with me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more, all to help you Tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. Welcome back to The Dog Show. Up next, we have Satchmo. Satchmo is a member of the Shelter Pet Group. That's right, a group known especially for their couch snuggling, ball chasing, face licking, and of course, companionship. Now, let's see him in action. Look how he makes eye contact with his person. That's actually known as the treat stare. How intuitive, and now he appears to be excitedly turning in circles. Ah, the happy dance will come in with this group. But really, the best way to know an amazing shelter pet like Satchmo is to meet one. Visit the shelterpetproject.org today. Adopt. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. Hi there, and welcome back to The Astrology Show. I'm your host and astrologer, Kelly Fox, talking about the planets this week, but this show is dedicated to all you Leo the Lions out there. The sun is moving into your sign on Saturday, where it will be until August 22nd. Now, just before the break, I was talking about Leo compatibility with each of the signs. I have uh, two more signs to tell you about, and... Leo and Aquarius. Now, this is really interesting because there's an eclipse 
happening in Aquarius opposite Leo on August 7th. So Leo and Aquarius, you had an eclipse uh, affecting your relationship in February and now there is another eclipse on August 7th uh, that will be in Aquarius and Leo. So this is a, a testing time for all you Leo Aquarian couples out there. So typically with Leo and Aquarius, you're both fixed signs. So this is, uh, and I was going to share a secret with you just before the break. And what it is uh, in astrology, when you have opposite signs, when it's good, it's great. And when it's bad, it's not so great. Uh, and so this relationship is like a seesaw. Uh, so the seesaw, it's like opposites attract um, because you couldn't be more different. It's like you, you're attracted to each other for your differences. Um, so sometimes uh, later on, the differences might not be so great. So um, while Leo is fun-loving and attention-seeking, uh, the water bearer is uh, cool and aloof and doesn't care about being the center of attention. So that's what makes it really great. You're not both fighting for the center stage. Uh, so your relationship's probably like a seesaw constantly in motion. So it's up to you to find the balance. Now, finally, Leo and Pisces compatibility. Uh, you two are connected uh by karma, there's something something familiar that you feel like you've known each other before or there's something uh, that you get about each other. Uh, Pisces adores the lion for its strength and courage uh, and will find protection and direction. Uh, and so you're both big dreamers, uh, but Leo is more inclined to take action around that. Um, you're both very sensitive. I know Leo doesn't like hearing about this. Uh, and you can both get your feelings hurt very easily. Um, Pisces is really intuitive. Uh, I'd probably say psychic. Most Pisces I know are definitely psychic. Um, so it's it's a, it's a matter of uh, Leo and Pisces just understanding the differences and taking care of each other. Now, uh, there is a forecast I want to give to all you Leos out there. Uh, in October, October 10th, uh, Jupiter moves into Scorpio for the next year. So the focus for many lions uh, from October 2017 through October 2018 uh, will be on home and family. If you're looking to move or renovate, that would be the time, or um, maybe issues come up uh, and transformations can occur within the family unit. Uh, also, uh, Saturn is going to be moving, changing sign in December. And uh, if you're looking to increase your family, um, adding children, um, 2018, 2019 is a great time to do that. Okay, so our other planetary events for this week, I've been talking a lot about the Sun and Mars moving into Leo. So Mars moves into Leo on Thursday where it will be until September 5th. So Mars is the planet of passion. Mars um, is our sex drive. It's our propensity for irritation. It's our urge to compete and succeed. Um, it's all about taking action, sports. Uh, I think very testosterone when I think of Mars. Uh, that's why we say Mars is the warrior planet um, and so on. So when Mars is in Leo... Uh, this will be a time when action, there's going to be plenty of action. Uh, this influence is very upbeat and enthusiastic. Um, it's sort of like um, we'll have so much energy and drive that uh, we really, we will really need a direction uh, in which to focus ourselves because we just, there are so many options and choices when Mars is in Leo, we might not know which way to turn. Uh, some of us might be all over the place and so passionate about everything that we encounter. Um, so we want to devote ourselves to a person or a cause with this energy. Um, but our own ego will be our primary motivation, of course, because Leo is the sign of the ego. Um, but also Leo does like to take care of others. Uh, usually they say that Leo likes to take care of the underdog. 
Uh, so that's another thing is taking care of others. Uh, so in other words, this is a great time really for a diet and exercise because we have so much energy. So uh, on Monday, Venus forms a square to Neptune. So this is all about uh, mysteries and not really seeing some people in uh, personal relationships for what they are or it's about daydreaming. Uh, we also have Mars square Uranus. Uh, which is uh, be careful about tempers flaring and intensely unpleasant events uh, seemingly coming out of nowhere. I always think of explosion and volcanoes with this sort of influence. The good news is on Tuesday, Venus forms a trine to Jupiter. This is one of the most auspicious influences we can have. Uh, so it's a good time for romance or for finding something um, that we've been looking for. It could be materially, romantically. Um, negotiations go well this week under that influence too. On Wednesday, we've got Mercury trining, this, trining Saturn. Uh, this is great for um, discipline and attention and long-term planning. For being practical and pragmatic, uh, it's a really great influence to have. On Thursday, we've got the sun squaring Uranus. Uh, be careful with irritation and restlessness, uh, unexpected events, people behaving and acting differently that we weren't really prepared for. Now, on to your weekly horoscope. Uh, so just remember this week, we've got the sun and Mars uh, moving into uh, bold and dramatic charismatic Leo. Um, so the energies are pretty razzmatazz and show busy. Um, but as I just said, uh, so the square between Venus and Neptune might bring confusion in love and money matters. Um, and even perhaps something that might seem like it's smiling, but it's not. Uh, and then, of course, the sun squaring Uranus, a major shake-up could be on the way for some. So Aries. You need to indulge your inner child this week. So think about what makes you smile and laugh, what brings you joy. And do more of that and much less of what makes you frown. No matter what your circumstances, you can make choices to bring more fun into your life. You're a Taurus. Watch out for a dogmatic attitude. You're very firm in your views, but try to listen to other opinions also. Uh, especially in the home, someone else has something very valuable to say. So ignoring the input would be very unwise. If you're a Gemini, you're determined to have your say, and that's a good thing. Think about how you phrase things and use your communication skills and charm to soften the blow. Find ways to getting your point across without upset or drama. If you're a Cancer, Mars encourages you to get your financial situation under control. Take a longer-term view and be sure that you understand the legalities and small print of your situation. If you're a Leo, the arrival of the sun and Mars in your sign brings you a huge burst of energy, enthusiasm, and positivity. Don't waste this opportunity to dream big and to set plans in motion. Everything is now working in your favor. Yay. If you're a Virgo, this week marks the beginning of a short rest period for you. Take every opportunity to catch up on your sleep or to simply chill out with your family. It's time to recharge your batteries now, ahead of the action, which is coming soon. If you're a Libra, your leadership skills are emerging during this vibe, and you'll find yourself in charge at work, whether you like it or not. Stay calm and do what you do best, bringing the best out in others so that the team can work together cohesively. If you're a Scorpio, this extremely ambitious week is the perfect time to look for a better job. You're very aware of your own abilities and you're able to promote yourself confidently without sounding arrogant. Go for it and good luck. If you're a Sagittarius, bored of the same old, same old, Mars gives you permission to ring the changes and to seek exciting new places, spaces and experiences. Sit your routines and make time for spontaneous ideas. Your best plan is to not have a plan. If you're a Capricorn, Mars encourages you to work on yourself, breaking a bad habit perhaps, or setting up new good habits. Figure out what needs to change in your life and how you can make that happen. There's a very can-do vibe 
surrounding you this week. If you're an Aquarian, oh, passionate. Mars is in your love zone. Uh, turning up the temperature and hot and spicy liaisons are sure to put a spring in your step. Be aware, however, that passion and anger are two sides of the same coin. Tempers may well flare. And finally, if you're a sweet Pisces, during this exceptionally busy week, try to remember to breathe. You're driven to perfectionism now, but that means that you're making everything harder than it needs to be. Try to acknowledge when good enough is and will indeed be good enough. So there you have it, your weekly horoscope and the planetary energy this week are exciting. Of course, they always are. July, uh, I've heard from a lot of people with uh, the readings I've been doing this month, um, lots of changes. Uh, people people are looking at uh, the build-up with the eclipses coming next month. Oh, we're talking about those in each week's show. That's it for tonight. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Kelly Fox. I look forward to you tuning in next week. Have a great week.